never seen something hey guys, so beautiful. Good Marks Goods here, and today I just wanted to show you all some of the finds that I've been able to acquire uh, the past couple of weeks. And I finally have time to go ahead and look at some of them and do some listings today. Now this is, the first one I'm going to show you all is this piece. It's an old trophy looking thing. Now here's, unfortunately it's pretty scratched up and on the front, but we can still make out the, the words. Really interesting. So here, I don't know what I'm going to find because a lot of the time I can find some really cool old stuff but that doesn't mean that it's it's valuable it doesn't mean that it, that there's a market for it it's kind of like a case-by-case -case basis because i remember finding an old an old pewter goblet that that uh was given away at a fair for a price chicken in like 1930. <laughs> like, that's cool but i don't think that anybody will want it maybe it, this is kind of the same case but it might be a little bit better here. So we have on the front, it says Northwest Mutual Life Insurance Company, Southern California Agency, monthly competition, 1931. And then on the back, it has monthly winners for January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Yeah, each month there was a person. And I guess it was like, Whoever in their company sold the most life insurance policies. <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, and I don't know who would have who would have actually owned this trophy. Did they make twelve of them, and then and then like each person got one? So there's twelve out there in existence somewhere, and I have one of twelve. I don't know. And unfortunately, it's pretty it's pretty beat up. The bottom here is really dented. That's just, that's just a shame. But I thought it was cool. It's 1931. <laughs> that was kind of like during the depression. So I guess that insurance was booming back then. <laughs> I don't know. And man, it, it looks, it looks wicked. Like, it's a cool form. And the tarnish is just, it's just on there, you know. I don't know, am I, should I polish this up and try to bring this shine back or should I leave it as is because I don't really know, it's, it looks pretty rustic the way it is. <laughs> I'm still on the fence about things like that. And it, it has a name on it. PSCO. So PSCO is probably Prill, that's what comes to mind. And it also has the name of the the jeweler that designed the trophy, I guess. I was able to make it out one day, and I looked it up. It was an actual real jeweler that, that got pretty famous. J.A. Jewelers? J.A. Myers, that's right. J.A. Myers. Kind of uh, impressed that, that they would have went uh, to this link to um, up with a cool trophy like that. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I fully expect my company, if I stay with them for like 50 years, to give me a pen. And it would be like silver plated probably, so I would be like all excited. Yes! A silver plated pen! And then they would like look at me like I'm a lunatic. But yeah, that's how I expect my 50th year anniversary at my current company to go. This is cool. So here we have an eternally yours candle holder, candlestick thing. And unfortunately, it came damaged in shipping. Because this right here is very, very uh, chipped. The silver is completely bitten in here. That would have happened due to very um, poor shipping practices. And actually, these three pieces came in the same box. I believe, maybe this one too? I can't remember if this one came in the same box, but I'll talk about this one in a bit. But so I come here, I come home, and I pick up a box and it, it shakes, it rattles. You never want to hear that. As well, if it's not silverware or flatware, 
that's okay. The bugs can rattle a little bit. I'd, I'd rather we didn't. I'd rather they still pack the flatware with enough density that it's not shaking around. But I can manage because it's unlikely that the flatware will be damaged as much. But here, they put it in a tub, a plastic tub. And unfortunately, even the plastic tub got damaged, so I can't reuse the plastic tub for any other purposes other than just normally. And there was no bubble wrap at all, almost. Yeah, they just put a tub with 15 pounds of plate, and it's just moving around. So I get mad, and I, uh, I email them, and I'm like, what the hell, man? That's not how you wrap my stuff. And they're like, okay, I'm sorry, here's five dollars back. Okay. But anyway, paternally yours, this was given as a some kind of trophy. Again, ERTC, uh, fourth place. Open 1954. That would be really cool to get set a trophy like this if you were in fourth place for anything, I guess. I don't know what ERTC means. Maybe it's tennis. Mm -hmm. But at this point, a Turtle Yours candle holder would probably sell for 30 to 50 bucks in this current market. Maybe it'll sit a while, but it'll find a buyer. At this point, though, I think I'm just gonna scrap it. I don't want to deal with anybody. I'd like 15 bucks for this. But there's always that chance that I pissed somebody off and they didn't read and they think that they, they just found a good deal for 15 bucks for this while well, everybody else was uh, asking for 30 to 50 and they just blame me because they can't read and they're not happy. So I'd have a return. Instead, I'm just going to strip this of its silver. After all, it is single and it's just a trophy for a who knows why, who knows when. 1954. Mm -hmm. Moving on, and these pieces were also in that same box, but they seem to have uh, survived much better than the trophy. Of course, there's still some scratches, but I do not like vegetable dishes, but I don't think that this is a vegetable dish. It's a little bit bigger than your normal vegetable dish. I would call this a uh, appetizer dish, entree dish. Is this an entree dish? If this is an entree dish, then there is definitely a market for it, as it is much it's much more fancy, and I was like, I was, uh, my heart dropped when I looked at the box and how they packaged it. So I expected that this part, the very beautiful handle to be, to look really bad, but no, it, it made it just fine. And the company is Continental, Continental Silver Company, there's a marking somewhere. I believe that this is Continental, that's American. Like, Probably around the 60s, 50s. Well, one of my favorite resources online claim it's Crown Silver Company, which eh, makes sense to me. And then here, got a tree made by Prima. Prima was made was in Denmark. It's kind of like a very beautiful little piece as well. I like it. Uh, I would ask about 40 bucks for a tree like this. That sounds fair to me. Probably is a good company. They, they have made some beautiful stuff. And then there's some writing on back here. Santiago something. Oh, I'm sorry. They're, they're like names. And I don't speak Swedish or Danish or whatever. So I'm not even going to try to pronounce those names. But the date on, on the back says 1949. Here, I, I'm always on the lookout for silver solder pieces. I really love them. And this one is made by International Silver Company. They're really hard to make out. Unfortunately, it's really hard to make out. But I think it's dated 1928. But there's also an M in the front with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars. Seven stars. Um. Not sure what that is. I haven't really had much time to research that. Let's see, an M logo with seven stars surrounding. Yeah, that's not helpful. It is really hard to find where old logos like this. Really hard to, to be able to identify. And I don't think I'll be able to do it. I went ahead and bought a cheaper box of, of candle sticks today. Candle sticks are cool. I like them. They're kind of like trees, and, and I did a little bit of trees. 
past month. But they're pretty similar to trays where they they're kind of slow sellers, but there's usually constant steady demand for trays. And the holders are pretty similar. This is why you're bought box is because of these ones. What uh, what kind of culture were they trying to depict on this? If I had to guess, and I know I already I looked and it, it this is made by Barber, Barber Company, guys. And Barber had a really interesting line of Dutch Revival. And this is a beautiful example of their Dutch Revival line, I do believe. And so you see little little seams of a, of old Dutch Usually it's like peasants or farmers. And you all see how Ray, how all these parts out of our race ended up losing their the silver. And that's really common with this company. Because it was raised, it would, the silver would wear off a lot easier if you're holding it or if you're trying to uh, polish it up. And they're really interesting and kind of valuable. So definitely going to be able to profit off this box just from these pieces alone. I would say they, the prices don't seem to be that high, but I could easily see 30 to 50 each. Uh, this particular one there. I'll show you guys pictures of the, of the scenes in, in the video. We appear to have, there's like barrels, maybe she's making butter, a wicked stuff. Somebody's trying to sell the same pair, only the plating is, is in better shape on their pair. We don't see the copper shining through theirs, and they want 75 for theirs. I think that that's a little bit underpriced for a, a pair of barber that's in perfect condition, but and again, the, the market just speaks, oh, that, they want, oh, the market is just so bad right now. Do these people on Etsy, their candle holders are in similar condition to mine, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit worse, where it comes to, yeah, okay, copper is completely showing here, and they're, the silver is almost completely off. It's cool because this company did use copper as a base metal. So it's still, even without the silver, in my opinion, this is still a presentable piece that people wouldn't mind having in their homes. It's not ugly as all crap, you know? It's a pretty little orange copper. Some people like that. And they, they're claiming that it's copper plated, Dutch themed copper plated candlestick holder. And that's complete bullshit. They're, they're probably copper, base metal, silver, plated with the silver completely off. But I do, I do admire that guy's hustle. I think that's a little, it's a little sketchy to claim that, though, in my opinion. And this one, very beautiful pair of um, Mercari for 36.10. So I guess it... There's some pretty cheap, this one's 45 a pair. And they have a number 3966. What's my number? 3966. So this exact pair, somebody's asking for $45. It's in great shape. So I guess that uh, the prices are pretty low on these pieces. And so if I wanted to sell them mine, I want 30 bucks a pair in my condition. Maybe the prices are gonna rebound again. Who knows? Stuff like this comes and goes. Um, Colonial, I guess, is out right now. It is what it is. These are something, aren't they? They remind me of Gothic. So yeah, uh, pretty rustic looking. Unfortunately, it looks like there's a lot of damage to the side, to the body of this what kind of force it would have taken to to dent to this in like this 
That looks like it would have taken like a pretty damn high force like I have no idea actually. It would have been really difficult to, to push this metal in like this. Now the question is, is it, does that make this worthless? And oh and the maker is uh, Wilcox Silver Plate Company. And anybody who's been watching my channel for a little while knows that I've been going relatively gaga for this company, which makes me sad if I were to destroy this piece or scrap it, but I think I might because I don't really see any demand for this, given how how dented this this part is. It's like, what the heck? It is quadruple pleated as well. I mean, it's, as far as value, it's still it's still gotta have value. But maybe I'll just scrap it, and we'll see how much silver I can get off of the piece. Maybe that can be a future video. I don't know. Maybe. Mm. Really on the fence about that. But man, somebody really just gave this a whack with something. Uh, okay, got yourself some real backyard, backyard rustic stuff. Imagine that could look nice in somebody's yard. It wasn't painted. Am I looking at painted stuff? Is this iron raw? I don't know. I stick to silver plate, guys. Things like this just confuse me. They got themselves a nice little koi garden and they put that in there. Koi pond. Oh, yeah, let's go see how bad the damage is. It is just. Oh, okay, maybe this is a screw on it. Oh. What the heck? What even is this? See here? This reminds me of something very modern, actually. Oh, yeah, this is modern. And here's a little sticker here. This, I think that this, this part would have said made in China or something like that. Made in Hong Kong. Absolutely not what I'm looking for. I don't even know how I can make it better. Oh, it's so loose and crap. Tighten that, maybe. Well, anyway, that's not what I'm looking for. Can you stand up? Imagine that, you try to light fires and you try to light this, have a romantic candle, romantic dinner by the candlelight, and then the, your candle holder just falls off, over, and then you, uh, you have to deal with the fire. And then you look like a dork to your date, which took you like four months to get and 50 rejections. And then you're on back to square one because of your candle holder was weird. The fudge. Well, anyway. Last thing I'm going to show you guys, these are salt cellars, and I have these, uh, I have these, they are, they are being featured in another video, currently, about ice cream, but this is salt, maybe I'll have salt ice cream, salty ice cream one day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy some ice cream right now, but, um, uh, they are 800, silver actually in this case and I weighed them earlier there there's about three ounces of silver between all the balls and these little spoons they have glass glass liners and well you do need glass liners for salt salt cellars you don't really want the salt to be 
to have any contact with the, the silver or the metal. Obviously that will corrode even silver. Salt is very corrosive on almost any metal. And yeah, uh, I would imagine that they are made around the turn of the century. Like if you're looking at Art Nouveau style. And they are marked 800. And there was a crown. I do believe that they are German made. That I had to guess. That's what country of origin I would depict them as. And I don't know how much they're worth. They're kind of hard to find in comparisons about. You can see salt sellers there a lot. A lot of the time they're made by, they're sterling and they're made by England makers. In this case, a little bit weird. Art Nouveau is always in favor, it seems. Not really like Dutch Revival. Art Nouveau seems to be always in favor and always has its fans. So I would want $40 a piece for each. And I'll take like $10 off because we're missing the spoon in one of them. So that makes me. 170 uh, I would want for all four. I guess. I'm just spitballing here. I looked at the prices. Salsalers are definitely a hot commodity in the antique world. Okay. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed uh, my finds here. Even some that are subpar to I don't know. Never know what I'm gonna find in these boxes. Just off the phone. I still don't know who. What? What were they thinking when they designed this? Seriously, that's what. What were they thinking? In what world is this acceptable? Okay. The mark goes out. Good, March, good.